We are Kristen and Sam, and we spent six months of our lives living and traveling throughout Colorado for a travel nursing assignment. We wanted to give a list of our favorite things that we have done in Colorado so you can join it for yourselves. Keep in mind that there are still so many things that we haven't done in Colorado that are still on our bucket list, but here are our favorites for now. Rocky Mountain National Park. This has been our favorite national park out of the 13 that we have seen so far in this country. Our favorite hike starts off at Bear Lake Trailhead and you hike all the way to Emerald Lake, passing by several lakes along the way. We did this hike before our YouTube days, so it's not pictured here, but believe us when we say that it is still our favorite hike to date. Bear Lake Trailhead can get very crowded and even so that the roads will be blocked off when full. So plan to visit early in the morning. A lot of national parks are now requiring a reservation system to enter the park, so always check the national park websites before you visit any national park. Another great hike that is pictured is a hike up to Deer Mountain where the views are phenomenal. Entry into the park is $25 per car. Pagosa Springs Resort. This hot spring resort was so fun to visit. If you're looking for an all natural hot spring, this one really isn't it, but the layout and beauty of it make up for it. There are several pools to choose from with all various temperatures. We often had to share pools with others, but we really didn't mind as there was plenty of room for everyone. Reservations are required, so book your ticket in advance online. Tickets are $25 a person for a day pass, or you can stay on site and reserve a package. They have food and drinks for purchase, which is great if you're wanting to spend all day there. Paint Mines Interpretive Park. This place is near Colorado Springs and is such a unique place. The park consists of various clay rock formations that all have different colors to them. Back in the day, Native Americans used this clay to make pottery. Here you can walk around the miles of trails and view these formations. What is great is that there's no entry fee to enter. This is definitely one of the more unique sites that we have seen. We loved just walking around, sitting down, and viewing the rock formations and made for such a relaxing day. Royal Gorge this ranks very high on our list because of the phenomenal views and the fun we had there. You can choose to walk across the bridge that stretches over the gorge for $25 a person. This is actually America's highest suspension bridge, so don't do it if you're afraid of heights. You can also choose to zip line across the gorge, which is also America's highest zip line. We had planned to do this, but the strong winds that day made them cancel our reservation. We also did the Royal Gorge train, which is about a two hour train ride through the bottom of the gorge. Here, you can reserve several different types of seat arrangements. We chose to sit in the dome compartment, which came with a meal. It was our wedding anniversary, so we splurged a bit. On the train, there is an option to view the gorge from an outside compartment too. This was our favorite part of the train ride because you get such an unobstructed view of the gorge itself. Mesa Verde National Park. Mesa Verde is a unique spot in Colorado because it is a site with several Native American cliff dwellings. There are several lookouts that you can pull your car off at and view these cliff dwellings. You also can learn so much about how the Native Americans built these houses and lived back then. With the reservations, you can also tour some of these cliff dwellings. When we visited, we not only saw the dwellings, but did a really fun hike called the Petroglyph Point Trail. This trail was pretty moderate, but it was one of the more fun hikes that we've ever done. Toward the end of the trail, you get to view some petroglyphs that the Native Americans made back then, and that was super cool to see. Entrance to the park is either $20 or $30 per car, depending on the season. Estes Park, Colorado. It really is hard to just point out one thing for you to do here, so I'm going to tell you some of our favorites. We have a soft spot for little mountain towns, and Estes Park is no different. This has to be one of our favorites. Being the gateway to Rocky Mountain National Park, there are so many cool things to see just within the city. The downtown area is full of unique shops and restaurants that you really can't miss. You can also walk up and down the beautiful river walk that they have there. Estes Park is also home to the famous Stanley Hotel, which is said to be haunted. Several movies were filmed here, and it is also where Stephen King got the inspiration to write The Shining. Another great thing to do during a warmer season is to visit Lake Estes. There is such a gorgeous view of the mountains and the surrounding nature here. If you are visiting Estes Park, keep an eye out for elk because they are everywhere here. Red Rocks Amphitheater This is such a famous place right outside of Denver where concerts are played. 
What is so unique about this place is the fact that these rock formations form a natural amphitheater, making the sound quality phenomenal. Here, you can hike around the numerous trails and view the museums displaying memorabilia from famous artists that played here. Remember to park at a high-level parking lot if you can, or you will be forced to walk up the hundreds of steps to the top of the amphitheater. Great Sand Dunes National Park Home of the highest sand dunes in North America, can you believe that these are in Colorado? We were amazed at the size of these dunes and it literally felt like we were in another country. Here, you can hike up the dunes or in the mountains, relax in the creek, and even sandboard and sand sled down the dunes. When we visited, we chose to hike up one of the tallest dunes in the park, which we kind of regretted. Not going to lie, this hike was brutal, but we did feel good about ourselves when we finished. We did, however, really enjoy sandboarding and sledding. What a unique thing to do. Entrance is $25 per vehicle. Oh, and another thing that we loved to do here was seeing the stars at night. A lot of the national parks are dark sky parks, so this isn't unique to Great Sand Dunes, but we have to say that this is a great place if you want to do it. Breckenridge, Colorado. Our absolute favorite thing that we have done in Colorado was here in Breckenridge, and that was in fact dog sledding. Oh my gosh. We booked a tour with Good Times Adventures, and it was $150 per person. Each person got to steer the dogs twice. They teach you the techniques of steering the dogs, and it honestly is not as hard as you think. When it is not your turn, you ride in a sled pulled by a snowmobile, and you get to watch the others in your group go. Not only was it a great time to steer the dogs, but it was such a beautiful place for it. This was hands down one of our most memorable experiences ever, and it definitely is a bucket list item. In between runs, we also got to pet the dogs and love up on them, and they were just so adorable. The town of Breckenridge could honestly just be part of the list all by itself. The downtown area was so cute that we went there so many times without getting bored of it. There are so many great restaurants, coffee shops, breweries, and adorable shopping malls. We also loved seeking out the little Breckenridge Troll. Or is it really that little? It's more of a huge Breckenridge Troll. Garden of the Gods. This park is located in Colorado Springs. The rock formations are massive here, making it such a sight to see. The red rocks up against the mountains in the distance give the park such character. The name comes from a surveyor who visited back in the day and said that the park was fit for the gods. <laughs> there are miles and miles of hiking trails here, which are so fun to do and are mostly pretty easy. We always enjoyed seeing Pike's Peak off in the distance, which is one of Colorado's 14ers. This means that the mountain is above 14,000 feet in elevation. Entrance into the park is free, which makes it all that much better. A lot of the park has cement pavements, which makes it an easy spot for the whole family. Denver, Colorado. As much as we don't want to add a big city as a whole in the mix, Denver really does a great job of keeping the city clean and enjoyable compared to other cities that we've visited. Among the city, there are so many outdoor activities to enjoy, which helps hide the fact that you are in fact in the middle of a city. The city is filled with art and culture that anyone would love. Our home base in Colorado was in Denver, so we have to say that it can be a really great place to live and visit. Our favorite sites were 16th Street Mall and Larimer Square, which are both outdoor shopping and entertainment strips. Oh, and we also loved the Big Blue Bear at the Convention Center. There are honestly so many things that we could list here, but it would be more efficient if you just watched our several Denver videos if you're interested. Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. Can you believe that this is one of the least visited national parks in the country? To be honest, a lot of it has to do with location, but that doesn't mean that it's lesser of any of the other parks. The gorgeous views of the Black Rock is like nothing that we have ever seen before. It is called Black Canyon of the Gunnison because some parts of the canyon only get 30 minutes of daylight each day. When we visited, we started off on the south rim and drove around to the various lookouts of the canyon. We really didn't do any hiking here unless you count the small trails that lead you closer to the edge, which really allowed us to soak up the views in each location. Entrance to the park is $30 per vehicle. It is really difficult to get into the park during the winter months, so do your research if you're planning on visiting then. So those were our top things that we did when we visited Colorado, but we still have so many things that we want to see. What are your favorite things that you have done in Colorado? We would really love to know in the comment section down below. 
Also, you don't want to miss out on our detailed blogs at each of these locations. Watch and save our playlist here so you can refer back to it when you plan your next Colorado trip.